Hello guys, a very good morning to all of you. So myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. Let's begin today current today's current affairs and the questions that I'm going to take up in this video can be of relevance for your upcoming examinations. So do listen to me very carefully till the end of this video. But before moving ahead, if you are a newcomer here, then do not forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell notification. Also, you can join this telegram group where we provide you with free quizzes as well as we try to resolve your queries. So if you want to directly connect with us and other mentors on our channel, then you can join this group and the link of this group is in description below. This is the new course for 2022. Let me give you a brief introduction about this course. So it has PDFs, videos and mock tests. Apart from this, we also provide you the interview assistance. So we conduct mock interviews so that you can prepare for your interviews as well. Also, we provide you with a book kit and that book kit includes question banks for both the phases. Apart from this, you will have past years for both the phases and uh, a revision booklet for phase two. Apart from this, a notebook and a pen will also be provided to you in that book kit. Right now, we are running a 30% uh, discount on this course. So if you want to get yourself enrolled in some worthy course for RBI Grade B, then this is the opportunity, guys. You can get yourself enrolled in this course with the 30% discount that we are running on it. And you have to use RBI 30 coupon code in order to avail that discount. Okay, so that was all about the introduction. Now, let's move on to the first question. The first question is, which state has become India's first state to adopt online flood forecasting system? So we have Madhya Pradesh, Arunachal Pradesh, Assam, Odisha and West Bengal in the options. The right answer is option C, that is Assam. Assam has uh, developed this online flood forecasting system in partnership with UNICEF. Now this online flood forecasting system, it is very evident from the name itself that it is going to forecast the flood. That is one thing. But apart from this, it is going to take care of the entire process of forecasting, then providing relief, then providing, uh, then assessing the damage done and then providing the financial assistance for restoration. So these are the four steps that are provided uh, if there is a disaster by the government of any state or any country. So all these processes, all these four processes have become online through this system, which is basically a webcam mobile application system. So it can be operated through website as well, as well as the mobile application. So that is all. I don't think that there is anything that we can discuss here. Now, apart from this, related to Assam, there is one more information that you should know about, and that is the chief minister of Assam. So recently, 15th chief minister of Assam has sworn in and who is that person? What is the name of that person? The name of the person is Hemanta Bishwa Sharma. So he is the 15th Chief Minister of Assam and he belongs to Bharatiya Janata Party. Now the previous uh, Chief Minister of Assam, Sabananda Sonowal, has resigned from his position and therefore this person has sworn in as the 15th Chief Minister of Assam and it is also the latest news so do remember both the names. Moving ahead to the second question, which bank has partnered with Common Service Center to launch the chatbot EVA on CSC Digital Seva portal to support the village level entrepreneurs? We have ICICI Bank, HDFC, Access, Yes and DCB banks in the options. Which one is the right answer? The right answer is option B, that is HDFC Bank. Now the clear purpose of this chatbot EVA is to promote banking services, is to in increase the reach of financial inclusion and help these village level entrepreneurs in terms of banking services by providing banking services. Apart from this, this will also uh, create awareness among the rural customers about the services offered by HDFC Bank. So that is the basic purpose of this chatbot EVA. But remember that EVA is the chatbot released by HDFC Bank in collaboration with Common Services Center. Okay, so that was all about this question. Now I would like you to answer me that who is the MD of HDFC Bank in the comment section below. Third question. What is the theme of National Technology Day 2021? So the themes are right in front of you. Uh, reporting the economy through science, technology and research translations. Option B is Space Technologies and ISRO. Uh, technology for Inclusive and Sustainable Growth. Science and Technology for a Sustainable Future. Technology Enablers of Startup India. 
So out of these five options, which one is the theme for 2021? The theme is option D, that is science and technology for a sustainable future. Now we discussed the theme, but what is the day? What is the date on which this National Technology Day is observed? The date is May 11. So guys, 2021 was the 30th anniversary of this day. And this day was first celebrated in the year 1999. So that is the one fact, that is the background about this news. But do you know why do we celebrate National Technology Day? The one obvious reason is of course to boost the morale of scientists in India and to promote the awareness about science and technology. So that is the superficial answer anyone would give. But what is the background of National Technology Day? Why do we celebrate this day? So let me give you a brief history of this National Technology Day. So this day is celebrated because in 1998, India did the Pokhran test. So in the Pokhran test, that is the Operation Shakti. So in that Operation Shakti, India tested the nuclear missiles and thus India got the title of a nuclear equipped nation, a nuclear weapon nation. So that was the uh, benchmark mission that India did and it was in the year 1998. And remember that Operation Shakti was the code name of the Pokhran nuclear test. So that is all because of that reason, India celebrated its first National Technology Day in the year 1999. So these are the background informations related to this day that you should be aware of if you are going to write any answer in your examination related to this day. So that was all. Now moving ahead to the next question. Which country organized the third Arctic Science Ministerial? Japan, Iceland, Norway, both A and B and both B and C. The right answer is option D, that is both A and B, Japan and Iceland have together organized this third Arctic Science Ministerial. Now this is the third edition of this ministerial but it is also the first ever Arctic Science Ministerial that is being held in Asia because Japan is organizing this. Now what is this third Arctic Science Ministerial? This is basically a global platform that provides the uh, space for the stakeholders to discuss about the research and cooperation in the Arctic region. That is being written in the first point. Okay. Now, what was the theme of this third Arctic Science Ministerial? Theme is very important for you to remember. The theme is knowledge for a sustainable Arctic. And uh, Dr. Harsh Vardhan, who is also the Minister of Science and Technology, Health and Family Welfare and Earth Sciences, he presented India there and then he talked about how much emphasis India is laying on the Arctic region. You will get to know all these things, what he said there a little later, but let's first discuss about the background of this Arctic Science Ministerial. So this third Arctic Science Ministerial, I already said that it is the first edition that is being held in Asia. The previous two editions were held in US and Germany in the year 2016 to uh, 2016 and 2018. So that was the background of this Arctic Science Ministerial. Now, let's discuss why India is focusing so much on the Arctic region. Guys, if you are following the current affairs regularly, then you would know that back in the month of January 2021, India released a draft document of Arctic policy now that Arctic policy was aimed at promoting tourism as well as research in the Arctic region. And that is, that is the level of importance that India is giving to this region that it has released a policy and on that policy India is going to work upon. Now why is this important? There are two reasons behind this. First is the melting of ice in the Arctic region. And this melting of ice has a global implication on the climate change as well as biodiversity. So that is the surface reason, that is the primary reason for which India is laying so much focus on the Arctic region. The second reason is that, that there is a growing scientific evidence and scientific research that melting of ice do has a implication on the Indian Ocean and we all know that Indian Ocean plays a major role in the Indian monsoon season. So how is this melting of ice and the Arctic region is impacting the Indian oceans or and Indian monsoon? That is the other reason for which India is laying so much focus on Arctic region and India is researching on the Arctic uh, atmosphere and the ice melting. So these are the two reasons for which India is laying so much focus on the on this region. Now 
uh, since the year 2013, India has been an observer state, observer nation in the Arctic Council. What is this Arctic Council that we will discuss a little later, but let's first focus on the India's efforts in the Arctic region. So India is the observer nation since 2013 along with 12 other nations that are right here in front of you. Uh, apart from this, India has a permanent research station in the Arctic as well and that research station is named as Himadri and remember it is located in Norway. Apart from this, India also has a multi-sensor mode observatory that is known as INDRAC and it is again in Norway. So both of these are, uh, observatory as well as this research station has been uh, established by India in order to increase the research in the Arctic region. The next point is very important for you to remember that is the National Center for Polar and Ocean Research in Goa is administering this research in the Arctic region. So basically it is the nodal agency to conduct the research in the Arctic region. Remember this point guys, this is important. National Center for Polar and Ocean Research in Goa. Now let's discuss some facts related to Arctic Council. So this is a leading intergovernmental organization that is promoting cooperation in the Arctic region as well as research in the Arctic region. It was established in the year 1996 via Ottawa Declaration. This is important. Next, the headquarters is in Norway and the current presidency is with Iceland. And Iceland has a theme of its presidency. So basically Iceland is moving or is chairing this Arctic Council on a theme and what and that theme is together towards a sustainable Arctic. So this is the theme, this is the motto that Iceland is going to follow throughout its presidency of Arctic Council. Apart from this, there are the eight nations that are the members of this Arctic Council, Canada, Denmark, Finland, Iceland, Norway, Russia, Sweden, US. So all these members are the all these countries are the permanent members of Arctic states. Apart from this, we already discussed that there are 13 observer nations of this council. Now, that was all about this question. I hope that you have understood it well. But in case you have any kind of issue or problem in understanding anything, then you can ask me in the comment section below. Next, whose debut book is titled as Life in the Clock Tower Bell? So this is the uh, debut book. Of, of Shakur Rathe. So he is the uh, journalist at Press First of India. So remember this thing that he is the journalist and this life in the clock tower valley. This book is basically based on the Kashmir issue. So Kashmir's past, present and uncertain future is the theme of this entire book. And remember it's the debut book of Shakur Rathe. This is the last question, but an important question, guys. Who among the following is the convener of the 12th member national task force set up by Supreme Court to streamline the process of oxygen distribution between states and UT on the basis of scientific and specialized domain knowledge? So clearly, this doping or this task force has been set up in the wake of second wave of coronavirus. Now, who is the convener of this group? You have Devendra Singh Rana, Baba Tosh Bishwas. Gagandeep, Kang, Rajiv, Guba, Naresh, Prahan. And out of these five options, the right answer is option B. And remember, he is the present Union Cabinet uh, Secretary as well. And he is the convener of this 12-member National Task Force set up by Supreme Court. And the purpose is to streamline the process of oxygen distribution between states and union territories. So I guess this is a very simple question. There is no need to uh, mug up things. But this is easy for us to understand. Why is it created? What is the purpose? And how is it going to move further? So that was all for today. I hope that you have understood what I have taught you. But in case if you have any queries that as I always say, you are free to ask me in the comment section as well as you can ask me on the Telegram channel as well. Thank you so much for watching the video.